can the iPhone 14 Pro Max surpass the Pixel 6 Pro's camera quality? Uh, well, you're all probably expecting this to be a uh, definite yes. But to be honest, out of all the camera comparisons that we've done, this is the one that surprised me the most. We have 32 tests to compare, and don't worry, as we will be getting the Pixel 7 Pro as soon as it's out, uh, so if you want to see a video comparing the camera quality of the Pixel 7 Pro, the 6 Pro, and the iPhone 14 Pro Max, then definitely leave a like down below and uh, let us know. So starting off with this first outdoor shot, um, the Pixel is darker, but the colors are way more accurate. So the car was way closer in real life to how it looks on the Pixel. Uh, and we even have more shadow detail on the car's grille on the Pixel compared to uh, the iPhone. Next up, we have an HDR image, and here the processing is just so good on the Pixel. So the sky is perfectly exposed uh, compared to uh, the sky on the iPhone. The shadow details are very good. Uh, the iPhone is slightly sharper, but the biggest difference between the two, I would say, is the sky. And because of that, uh, the Pixel takes this one. And we have one more HDR shot, and here, once again, the processing is just perfect on the Pixel. The sky is blown out on the iPhone. Uh, once again, the iPhone is a tiny bit sharper if you look at the fence on the left. Uh, but take a look at how the shadow from the tree is completely gone on the iPhone because of the processing, whereas this is fully visible on the Pixel. So overall, the Pixel has the better image quality here once again. Then we wanted to test out the raw capabilities of both of these phones. So the iPhone can take a 48 megapixel raw, whereas the Pixel can only do 12.5 megapixels. So it is permanently binned to 12.5, you cannot do 50. So I've edited both of these raws to look as good as they could. And uh, yeah, the iPhone simply blows the Pixel out of the water here. Uh, the image was way sharper on the iPhone and very noisy on the Pixel. We also had a larger range of colors if you take a look at uh, the orange in the sky. So yeah, this one doesn't even compare. The iPhone easily takes this one. Then we tested out some indoor shots to see if diffusion does make any difference on the iPhone. And um, yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> it is so much better on the Pixel. It is less noisy. We have significantly more detail. Um, and the image is also sharper if you take a look at the plant on the right, so really nicely done Google. But then, interesting enough, in the second shot, the iPhone 14 Pro was quite a bit better. So uh, the flooring was sharper, the seeds had a sharper texture, so we can actually see Deep Fusion work here quite well. Um, and then uh, the buildings on the right and the plants, interesting enough, were actually sharper on the Pixel. Then we tested out Macro, which the Pixel doesn't actually have at all. So we simply use the telephoto module to get as close as possible to the subject. And here, of course, the iPhone easily takes this one. Uh, yeah, the difference is just night and day. So what about zoom? Well, we tested 2x zoom first, and here the Pixel simply zooms in digitally and then uses its AI-based super resolution to enhance the image, whereas the iPhone would simply use the middle 12 megapixel area of the 48 megapixel sensor. And because of that, the iPhone has more detail. Now, the Pixel also did a really good job, but you can see that a Pixel sharpened in post compared to the more natural look on the iPhone. Then we tested out 5x zoom, as that would be a bigger difference than going from 2x to 3x. And uh, here, the Pixel has a 4x zoom module and then zooms in digitally to 5x. The iPhone has a 3x module, which then zooms in digitally to 5x. And here, of course, the Pixel has noticeably more detail um, if you look at the texture on the sign, yeah, the Pixel is way better in the 5x zoom. And then, of course, we also tested 10x zoom, which was significantly better on the Pixel. Like, I was very impressed. This was, by the way, almost as good as on the S22 Ultra, which has an optical 10x zoom module compared to the 4x optical on the Pixel. So that super resolution AI upscaling seems to have worked really, really well on the Pixel. And as you can see, we have much more detail on the brickwork, on the clock, the roof and the trees behind compared to the iPhone. Then we tested out the ultra wide module and here the Pixel once again, take a look at that perfect HDR processing. The sky was perfectly exposed compared to the blown out sky on the iPhone, but it wasn't as sharp as the iPhone. If you take a look at the grass, uh, this was quite blurry on the Pixel. Same applies to the trees. Although it looks like the iPhone is applying a lot of sharpening in post, which I'm not really a fan of. Although the iPhone does have less noise in the shadows if you take a look at the trees uh, on the right. Then we took another ultra wide shot and here we can see that the iPhone has a noticeably wider ultra wide. So that's one of the main differences between the two actually. Um, the pavement was also sharper on the uh, iPhone and the building texture was sharper as well. We did lose some detail on the building on the right on the Pixel. 
Uh, and as before, the iPhone was sharper, but the Pixel had better image processing uh, if you take a look at the highlights. And then we took one more ultra wide shot, but this time indoors. And here you can see once again that the Pixel is noticeably narrower compared to the iPhone, uh, but it also had less noise. So uh, if you zoom in, you can see that it's not as noisy, you get more detail. The iPhone had more detail closer up if you look at Harry's jeans. So it seems like they both got their focus uh, in a bit of a different place. Moving on to video, and this is the one that surprised me the most. So you know how the iPhone has been known to have the best video on any phone? Uh, well, that's no longer the case, because if you take a look at the footage from the Pixel, you can see how the Pixel perfectly exposed the sky in the video, which on the iPhone, it is blown out almost entirely. Now, one downside to the Pixel is that it adjusts the exposure far too quickly, which was very distracting. But then if we pause the video, you can see that the videos are pretty sharp on both, a tiny bit sharper on the iPhone towards the bottom of the frame. But other than that, these were really, really good too. The colors were better on the Pixel. Uh, the iPhone was a bit more stable, but other than that, I honestly cannot believe it, uh, that the Pixel has a better 4K video than the iPhone does. We then tested ultra-wide video, but in this case, the Pixel was really, really bad. Not necessarily because of the processing, but because, you know, the Pixel's ultrawide is already quite narrow, and when you're taking video, it gets cropped in even more. So the Pixel looks pretty much like a main module shot, even though it wasn't, compared to the iPhone, which has a proper ultrawide video shot. Also, uh, the Pixel Max is out at 4K 30 when using the ultrawide compared to 4K 60 on the iPhone. Then we also tested action mode, which is something new on the iPhone. It's basically just very, very stable video for, uh, I don't know, when you're running or uh, shooting a subject that is moving. Um, the iPhone can do it in 2.8K 60 frames per second compared to 1080p 30 on the Pixel, so that's a pretty big difference. Now, in terms of the actual stabilization level, uh, it was pretty good on both. Very impressive on the Pixel. In fact, the Pixel was the only phone that could even come close to the iPhone level stabilization. The Pixel did mess up in a few cases where it lost uh, track of the subject, but yeah, I mean, to be honest, stabilization was really impressive on the Pixel. However, the iPhone was just flawless and you also had that extra resolution and the higher frame rate, so the iPhone easily, and I mean easily, takes this one. Then we tested out cinematic mode, uh, which is basically portrait mode video, uh, which the Pixel doesn't have, so we couldn't really shoot any footage of that on the Pixel. Uh, but yeah, there we go, this is how it looks on the iPhone. It's pretty decent, not perfect, but, you know, definitely usable. And then we tested out portrait mode um, using the zoom module. Now, fun fact, on the Pixel, you cannot actually do that. You need to use the main module for whatever reason and then it crops in digitally twice. So because of that, the Pixel is just very poor. Uh, it looks very low res and then sharpened in post, it looks bad. And this has been the case for a few years now. I don't know what happened. The Pixel used to be one of the best for portrait mode shots, but now it's just bad. The iPhone messed up in different ways, such as that it only kept Ren's nose um, unblurred and everything else was quite blurry. So that wasn't great either, but overall the iPhone does have the better portrait mode shot here. Then we tested portrait mode on me as well. Um, and yeah, it's just it's just horrendous on the Pixel. Like it's super low res. You also have very poor background separation. So I don't even know what's happening there. The iPhone takes this one as well. Uh, yeah, Google really needs to fix their portrait mode as uh, it's, just, it's just really bad now. And then we tested out night mode. Uh, first, we started with an evening indoor shot. Essentially, let's imagine that you're in your living room and you're taking some photos of your family. Uh, when it's getting dark and here the iPhone was sharper if you take a look at the texture of the armchair uh, This was more detailed on the iPhone But the pixel is less noisy and overall has a cleaner image if you take a look at uh, the left hand side Now when it comes to night mode in a proper low light environment the iPhone was better here So you had more detail in the brickwork uh, the pixel was also a bit too warm by the way The iPhone was uh, too cool. So in reality the scene looked somewhere in the middle um, And then on the pixel we had this really weird shadow outline around the bridge. Now, in the second night mode shot, they're almost identical. Now, the iPhone is a bit sharper if you zoom into uh, the dogway sign, and the brickwork is also sharper on the iPhone, but on the iPhone, it looks like it processed heavily uh, afterwards. So it sharpened the image afterwards, which once again, I'm not really a fan of, but I do think that they both did a really good job here. And then we tested out night mode, but with the timer maxed out, which was actually five seconds on both. Um, and here, the pixel was brighter and sharper with less noise, but the iPhone had a much more natural look than the Pixel. If you take a look at the left-hand side, uh, the Pixel is just way too bright, which um, the iPhone got it more naturally. I would say both are really good 
here. Now, when it comes to night mode using the zoom modules, uh, if you zoom into something like 3x, of course the Pixel doesn't have a 3x zoom module, so in that case, it would simply use the main module and then zoom in digitally, um, in which case the iPhone will be better. But then if you zoom in more to something like 10x, the Pixel will do a much better job. So as you can probably tell, the Pixel is just so sharp, there's just loads of detail uh, if you take a look at the trees and the texture on the building. So yeah, if you zoom in a lot and you also like to do that um, when taking night mode shots, the Pixel is going to be a much better choice. But then this next one really surprised me. So we tested out night mode using the ultrawide module and as you probably know, the iPhone got an updated uh, sensor for the ultrawide, which is now larger. You also get a new photonic engine. So I was expecting the iPhone to just blow the Pixel out of the water, which uses much inferior hardware. But that wasn't actually the case. So the Pixel is noticeably sharper in some areas. If you take a look at the tree, uh, or the ground that's also sharper, or the flowers on the cards, you can actually see them being blue on the Pixel, whereas on the iPhone, they've completely blended in. So yeah, that's a pretty major difference when it comes to the detail. Of course, uh, just like before, the Pixel is not as wide as the iPhone, so if you need a wider image in low light, then go with the iPhone, but other than that, the Pixel uh, does have a much more detailed ultrawide. Then we tested out Night Mode Portrait, and for some reason, the iPhone cannot use its 3X module with night mode when using portrait mode, which doesn't really make any sense as it can do those individually. Um, so yeah, this is how it looks. The Pixel uh, was using the main module and then cropping in digitally, but the Pixel looks so much better. It's much brighter, it's much cleaner. However, if you take a look at the background separation, that is actually better on the iPhone. But then when it comes to night video, this is significantly better on the iPhone. Like you have way more noise. Take a look at how bad the Pixel looks. But then interesting enough, um, I actually tried applying noise reduction to the Pixel's footage and final cuts and afterwards they actually looked very similar. Now the iPhone was still a bit more detailed in terms of the brickwork texture, but um, yeah, as long as Google can apply some noise reduction even after the video has been taken, uh, it would look just so much better and so much more comparable to the iPhone. Then we tested out the front facing camera and here they were both really good. The iPhone was a tiny bit sharper. Uh, and I would say that the HR processing was slightly better on the Pixel on the right hand side as the sky was a bit more visible than on the iPhone. But both of these were very good. Now, when it comes to front facing video, I'll let you guys watch this first. Okay, and now this is a front facing camera test video uh, between the iPhone 14 Pro and the Google Pixel 6 Pro. So let me know which one looks better and then also which one sounds better. So this is the audio coming from the iPhone 14 Pro. And now this is the audio coming from the Pixel 6 Pro. So yeah, let me know which one looks better and which one sounds better. Okay, so as you can probably tell, the image processing was quite a bit better on the Pixel. The sky just wasn't as blown out as on the iPhone. The colors were pretty bad on both. So that jacket that I was wearing was actually gray and it looked purple on the iPhone and a bit greenish on the Pixel. The Pixel was still more accurate. Now, when it comes to the front facing portrait mode, uh, we did have better edge detection on the Pixel, so this was actually better than uh, with the back facing camera. So if you take a look at my hair, you can see that edge detection being better. Um, the iPhone was brighter and it had that more gradual blur on my jacket, which was really nice. Um, and yeah, I do prefer the iPhone between the two here. Okay, now when it comes to the front facing camera in low light using night mode, in the first shot that I took, the iPhone messed up entirely. So. Uh, my black jacket had this super green tint and it was also extremely noisy. So then I took another shot and here they were uh, both equally bad. So very noisy and just not a lot of detail. The Pixel was a bit more natural, but yeah, I will still give the win to the Pixel here. Uh, the iPhone was just uh, bad in both examples. So in conclusion, which phone is better for what sort of photography? Well, if you care about indoor and uh, indoor night shots, then uh, I would say it's a tie. And I would say it's also a tie when it comes to the ultrawide. The iPhone was wider and sometimes sharper, but then the Pixel had way better processing, less noise, and uh, an overall cleaner image, especially indoors. And I would also say that uh, they were a tie in terms of the night mode. They both had ups and downs, but overall, uh, they both produced really good results. However, the iPhone was better in the following aspects. So macro photography, which of course the Pixel doesn't have, 2x zoom was better, ultrawide video was better, action mode was also better, uh, cinematic video was better, which doesn't even exist on the Pixel, and then portrait mode was better on the front, the back and uh, portrait mode pet was also better. And then of course, night video was significantly better compared to the Pixel. And of course, if you take any raw photos, then the iPhone is also going to be a much better choice. But then surprisingly, the Pixel had much better outdoor photography. So if you just like taking, you know, regular photos, then the Pixel will provide 
a much more accurate uh, representation in terms of the colors and way better processing than the iPhone without blowing out the sky. Then both 5X zoom and 10X zoom were much better on the Pixel, including in low light. Uh, regular video surprisingly was better on the Pixel, same for front-facing video. Uh, then the night mode ultrawide was better on the Pixel, the night mode portraits, the night front. So yeah, honestly, I'm really, really impressed with the Pixel considering that it launched almost a year ago. So as you probably know, Pixel 7 is coming out uh, in like two weeks. So yeah, stay tuned for um, maybe a camera comparison against uh, the iPhone 14 Pro or the Pixel 6 Pro. And do check out our previous camera comparisons right here. I'm Daniel, this is Zenoftech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenoftech, signing out. Cheers.